Hi everyone, this is Mr. Herbst and this is Water Solutions in Plain English. In the year 2007, there was a lady named Jennifer Strange who died at age 28, leaving her husband and kids behind. She had entered a radio show contest called Hold Your Pee for a Wii. The winner would win a Nintendo Wii. The goal was to drink lots and lots of water, gallons and gallons of water, without going to the bathroom. The winner would get a Nintendo Wii. Now what's the deal with water? In fact, most people say, most doctors agree, that you are supposed to drink eight glasses of water per day. Here I have what eight glasses looks like. Looks like a lot of water to me. Here I have that same eight glasses of water in this large container. Now most people say that's healthy. But wait a minute, how did she die? You may have already guessed that she threw off some sort of balance inside her body. Well, that balance was in her blood. Here I have some blood cells inside of a vein. Uh, they are just floating around, and that, that's a natural good thing. In me and you, uh, right now, sitting there, your blood cells are in what's called an isotonic solution. In blue, I have represented water molecules, and in green, I have represented particles of salt. You can see that you have an equal concentration of water to salt on both sides of your blood cell membrane. This is good. Things are equal. Things are in an isotonic state. You feel neither thirsty nor like you are about to die. In Jennifer's case, she drank so much water, and without her kidneys being able to urinate it out, it stayed in her blood. The, the water began to build up on the outside of her blood cells. It began to do, dilute the salt that she had on the outside of her blood cell. There was more salt on the inside of her blood cell than there was on the outside. You can think of that sort of like this. Let's say that you have one teaspoon of sugar. If you put that one teaspoon of sugar in one glass of water, it will probably taste pretty sweet. If you put that one teaspoon of sugar in a pot of water, well, more likely you won't be able to taste it. Most people will not be able to taste it. Now, if you put that one teaspoon of sugar inside of a big bucket of water, there is probably no chance any human being on earth will be able to taste that sugar. You have diluted the sugar so much inside of that big bucket. So what happened to Jennifer? Well, the water on the outside of her cells began to rush into her blood cells and things began to swell. The blood cell got larger and larger and larger and some of them maybe have even bursted or ruptured. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because water likes to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, high to low. The goal is to equalize the amount of water on each side of the membrane. That is a good thing. Now water still may move between the membrane, it may move on each side of the membrane, however it is moving at equal amounts. The goal is to become isotonic again. Now even though that the cell membrane has enlarged, you can see though by, by the water rushing in it has equalized the amount of salt to water concentration on each side of the membrane. That is a good thing. Now why does water do that? Well, it just so happens that many things on earth and many things in the universe like to exist in a balance. They like to equalize themselves. If you did an experiment at home where you dropped a drop of red food coloring into a glass of water, you would see that that Immediately when the red drop drops into the glass of water, it is concentrated or highly concentrated on only one region or one small part of that glass of water. Give it some more time and you will begin to see that red food coloring begin to spread out. It will begin to equalize. It will begin to move. Eventually, give it enough time without stirring it, you will see that that red food coloring will exist or equalize itself in all parts of the glass. Also, uh, let's say that your friend here farts. You have a high concentration of the fart particles right where he farted. You wouldn't be able to smell this yet. However, give it enough time and that fart smell begins to spread all around the room and eventually you will be able to smell it. Now what happened with Jennifer? 
It just so happened she drank so much water that her blood cells began to rupture. Then they could no longer perform their function. This was a very bad thing. Also, some of her brain cells may have done similar rupturing. And Gem Jennifer died. We call this, in science, a hypotonic solution. This is where you have a higher concentration of salt particles than you do on the inside of your cell than you do on the outside. You can see here I represented that you have more salt on the inside of your cell than on the outside. Water will begin to rush in with a goal of equalizing the salt to water concentration on each side of your cell membrane. An easy way to remember this, because hypotonic is such a long word, think big, think hypo, think oh, think hypotonic. Things get big, hypotonic. Now, question. Things can get big, right? Things can swell. Your cells can get big and swell up and eventually burst. Do you think that they can shrink? Why? Yes, they can. Here I have represented what's going on in a hypotonic solution as well as an isotonic solution. In a hypotonic solution, again, you have more, a higher concentration of salt to water on the inside of your cell than you do on the outside. Water will begin to rush in in order to equalize that concentration. Isotonic, you have equal concentrations on both sides of your cell. Water still may move between, your, between the cell membrane, however, it will move at equal amounts. Now in this case, let's say that you eat something extremely salty, like, well here I have a can of soup. You can see on the nutrition facts that, I, that you have about 20% of your daily value of sodium or salt in every single serving in this, in this can of soup. In this serving there are about two and a half servings of soup. So if you do the math, you get about 50% of all of the sodium that you need in one day just by eating this one can of soup, which probably won't fill you up anyway. So when you eat that soup, you're eating lots of salt. All that salt will begin to build up on the outside of your blood cells in your blood, and you will actually have a higher concentration of salt on the outside of your cell membrane than you will on the inside. You actually have more water on the inside of your cell than you do on the outside. So water will thus rush out because we're getting, remember water will always move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So your, shell, your cells will begin to shrink. What do we call that? Well we call that hypertonic where you have more a higher concentration of water to salt than you do on the inside of your cell than you do on the outside. You have more water inside than you do on the outside. Again, this will happen when you eat something really salty. You will build up the amount of salt on the outside of your blood cells than, than, and have higher, you'll have more salt on the outside than you will on the inside. So water will begin to rush out. Here we have a nice healthy blood cell. You eat too much salt and water will begin to rush out of your blood cells. Now that sounds like a bad thing but again mother nature is smart and she has designed us to have mechanisms which tell us to drink water. It's when you become thirsty. Now just like I came up with an easy way to remember hypotonic, get bigger, you can remember hypertonic like cold. Purr, you're cold. Things are cold. Hypertonic. When you're cold, you shrivel up. You want to stay in a little ball for warmth. Now let's review. We have hypotonic, where we have a higher concentration of water to salt on the inside, so water will begin to rush in. We have isotonic, where we have equal concentrations of water to salt, on both sides of our cell membrane, again, water may still move between the, cell, between the cell membrane, except it's going to move at equal amounts. And finally, we have hypertonic, where we have a higher concentration of salt on the outside of our cells than on the inside. So we actually have more water on the inside of our cells, thus the water will move out of our cells and our cells will begin to shrink. And here I have all three side by side. Hypotonic, your cells get really big. Isotonic, 
Again, water may still move in between the cell membrane. It will, only, it will move at equal concentrations. And finally, we have hypertonic, again, where water is rushing outside of our cells and our cells will shrink. That concludes our, our presentation of so, water solutions in plain English. Again, this was Mr. Herbst. Have a nice day, folks.